John 5, 22, 23 in the Jehovah's Witness Bible. Okay. For the Father judges no one at all, but he's entrusted all the judging to the Son, so that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. God bless you, Lopez. Okay, did you catch it? Now let's see if you're going to catch it now. Why did I quote this passage? Why did I quote this passage from the Jehovah's Witness Bible? The reason why I quoted John 5, 22, 23, specifically 22, to show that Jesus our Lord said, the Father judges no one at all, but has entrusted all the judging to the Son. Let's look at it again. John 5, 22. For the Father judges no one at all, but has entrusted all the judging to the Son. That's why I quoted the verse. Jesus says, my father doesn't judge anyone. He's left it to me to judge everyone. You need the Joe Witness to get to see that. You're going to have to say, do you see, Joe Witness, Jesus said, the father is not the one who's going to be judging anyone. Do you agree? That is Jesus who's going to be given all judgment to judge everyone? Yes, make sure they agree. So it's the son, right? The son is going to be judging everyone? Yes, not the father, right? Yes, that's the first point. Matthew 16, 27. Matthew 16, 27. For the Son of Man is to come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will repay each one according to his behavior. Why am I quoting this? Because Jesus is speaking, saying, I, the Son of Man, will come in the glory of my Father, God is his Father, showing the Son of Man is the Son of God, with my angels, and I will repay, I will repay each one according to his behavior. Okay. So according to Jesus, who's coming to repay everyone according to their behavior? Jesus, right? Not the Father. According to Jesus, will the Father judge anyone? Or it is the Son who judges everyone, and the Father has given all judgment to the Son. Okay, so if you got that, let's go to Revelation 22, 12. Look, I am coming quickly, and the reward I give is with me to repay each one according to his work. According to what we read, who's speaking here? Who's saying, look, I'm coming quickly, the reward I give is with me to repay each one according to his work. Who's speaking here? According to what you just read in Matthew and John. Right? Okay. Praise the Lord, you're getting it. To further prove it's Jesus, Revelation 22, 12 and 20. 12 and 20. Let's connect them together. Revelation 22, 12 and 20. Look, I am coming quickly. I am coming quickly. One more time. I am coming quickly. Don't forget that, that phrasing. And the reward is, I give is with me to repay each one according to his work. Now, verse 20. The one who bears witness of these things says, yes, I am coming quickly. Yes, I am coming quickly. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Did you get it? So who's saying, look, I am coming quickly. And the reward, my reward is with me to repay each one according to his doing. Yes, I am coming quickly. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Okay, are you sure you're getting it? Because this is how you're going to do it with the Jehovah Witness. This is how you're going to do it with the Jehovah Witness. Okay, now, this is what we're going to do. Matthew 16, 27, back to back with Revelation 22, 12, and 20. Matthew 16, 27, Back to back with Revelation 22, 12 and 20. For the Son of Man is to come in the glory of his Father with his angels. The Son of Man come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then he will repay each one according to his behavior. Revelation 22, 12. Look, I am coming quickly, and the reward I give is with me to repay each one according to his work. Verse 20. The one who bears witness of these things says, Yes, I am coming quickly. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Okay, now why did I repeat myself and yell and scream? Because here's why. Then you go to Revelation 22, now read 20, 12 and 13. Here's why. All of this was to do this. Revelation 22, verses 12 to 13. 
Look, I am coming quickly, and the reward I give is with me. For page one, according to his work, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and last, the beginning and the end. Bam! End of story, Joe Witnesses. Get you a new religion. Who just said, I'm the Alpha and Omega, the first and last, the beginning and the end? Jesus. You think? No, 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 man. You didn't get it. Jesus is Jehovah. But you're right. For a Jehovah Witness, Jehovah is the Father. I get what you're saying. Jesus is Jehovah, but he's not the Father. So for Jehovah Witness, Jehovah is the Father. Yep, exactly. But I got what you mean. Do you see how I did it? Because then they can't deny it if you follow that approach. John 5, 22. Matthew 16, 27. To get them to see and admit, yeah, Jesus is the one who judges, not the Father. Jesus is the one who's coming to pay each one according to their doing, not the Father. Revelation 22, 12. Look, I'm coming quickly, and the reward I give is with me to repay each one according to his deed. Who's that? Jesus. Verse 13, I'm the Alpha and Omega, the first, last, beginning, and the end. Bye-bye, Jehovah's Witness. No, and the Old Testament doesn't use beginning, and the end. It uses first, last. But they have a way around that. They have a way around the first, last. That's why I didn't go into that. It's going to take too much time to unpack. I stuck with that, which they can't get around. Because if you ask them, who's the Alpha and Omega? They'll say Jehovah, meaning the Father. Can a creature be Alpha and Omega? They'll say no. Only Jehovah, the Father, the Father who is Jehovah, only he can be Alpha and Omega. Hmm. You know why they, they can't allow a creature to be Alpha and Omega? Do you know why they cannot allow for a creature to be Alpha and Omega and allow for Jesus to be Alpha and Omega? Because they think he's a creature? Because go to Revelation 21, verses 6 to 7. Revelation 21, 6 to 7. And he said to me, they have come to pass. I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning the end. To anyone thirsting, I will give from the spring of the waters of life free. Anyone conquering will inherit these things, and I will be his God. He'll be my son. See, this is why they can't allow Jesus, whom they think is a creature, to be Alpha and Omega. Because here it says, the one who claims to be Alpha and Omega beginning and end says, I will be his God. I will be his God. He'll be my son. So they know this has to be Almighty God speaking. It didn't sink in. The sink in. So they'll admit only God, only Jehovah can say I'm Alpha and Omega beginning and the end. But then you got Jesus saying Alpha and Omega beginning and the end, first and last, first and last beginning and the end. Now, why is it the case that only God Almighty can say Alpha and Omega first and last beginning and the end? Because you have to explain what the titles mean. You know what those titles mean? Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. It's like saying... In English, I am A and Z. I am A and Z. A is the start, the beginning of the alphabet. Z is the end, the last letter of the alphabet. So that means Alpha and Omega is simply another way of saying beginning and the end, first and last. If you're the first and last, you're the beginning and the end. If you're the beginning and the end, you're the A and Z, Alpha and Omega. If you're Alpha and Omega, you're the first and last. These are simply three titles that say the same thing, right? So do you understand what it means? Alpha and Omega, first, last, beginning, and end. I am the beginning, I am the end. I am the first, I am the last. I am the A and the Z. What that means is God has been there from the beginning of creation, from the very first creatures, and he will continue to be with all creatures throughout all generations till the last generation to the very end of the age. This is simply a way of saying that God, because he's uncreated, timeless, who created all creation, created time, space, and place, was there from the start of creation and continues to remain with creation till the very end of the age because he's not bound to time. He's timeless. He's sovereign over time. He's the God of time, oversees time and everything that takes place in it. That's why a creature cannot claim these titles. That's why a creature cannot claim these titles. Okay, now everyone understand that argument. We got it now. It's down pat. Down pat. 
how it irrefutably points to Jesus Christ in their own Bible. And for Jesus Christ to say he's Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, first and last, that cannot be said of a creature. No creature can claim that, but Jesus Christ did because he's no creature. He is the eternal Son Almighty, one with the Father and the Holy Spirit. So he's not the Father, he's not the Spirit, but they're the one God. And as the one God, he's almighty, uncreated, timeless. He was there from the start. He's with us till this day and will remain till the very end of the age with every subsequent generation of creatures and believers until he ushers in the new heaven, new earth. Okay, now, let me just put some icing on the cake on it. Go to Revelation 21, verses 6 to 7. One more time. In the Jehovah's Witness Bible. Revelation 21, verses 6 to 7. And he said to me, they have come to pass, I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, to anyone thirsting, I will give from the spring of the water of life free. I will do that. Who's going to do it? The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, will give those who believe in him to drink from the spring of the water of life. Anyone conquering will inherit these things, and I'll be his God, he'll be my son. So guys, catch it. The one who's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, who's the God of those who conquer, and we are his children, he will give those who conquer the right to drink from the spring of the water of life. Here it says God. Okay. Revelation 7, 17. Who gives us the right to drink from the spring of the water of life for free? Revelation 7, 17. Because the lamb who's in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and will guide them to springs of waters of life. And God will wipe out every tear from their eyes. Did you catch it? The lamb will bring us his flock to springs of waters of life. But in Revelation 21, 6 to 7, it said, the God who is the Alpha and Omega and beginning and end, he will do that. He will bring you to the spring of the water of life to drink freely. Revelation 7, 17, it's the lamb who does it. You caught it? 